Hey everybody, Carl Schroof here from Snorkel.tv and today I just want to give you a few files that are going to help you build some really cool grids that animate. Okay, And so you'll see here I have my Grid Explorer which is previewable on Snorkel.tv. You can interact with it all you want um, and I'm just showing you a variety of the grid reveal styles that I'm going to give to you. Um, each one of these animations can be toggled back and forth because I'm using Timeline Max. All of the tweens are inserted into a master timeline that controls everything. And if I switch over to Diagonal Bottom, no big deal. I can tween back and forth. I can turn the masking off if I like, and I just have a grid that comes in and out. So you'll see all I'm doing is taking a series of these gray tiles, and I'm animating them at different times to create these patterns. So what I'm going to be giving to you is this grid demo file here which allows you to experiment with each style and tweak it however you like. So right now it looks like we have the uh, one by one top to bottom approach where it just draws down column by column. And if we look into this file, I'm going to go fairly quickly here, we have one function that builds the grid and there's one loop in there that takes a bunch of tile items out of the library, places them on the stage, and the meat here is really in these two lines of code that figure out which column and row the tile is going to go into. If you need a little bit of help deciphering all of this, I'm going to strongly recommend you read uh, Rich Shoup's article on Learning Action Script 3.0. I'll give you the link. Uh, but he talks all about building grids with nested for loops, and he also shows you how the modulus operator works and how we can determine rows and columns while doing loops. All right, so definitely check out that page. And in my flash file too, whenever it runs, you'll see here I'm tracing out the current column and current row. Well, this is the output that we get. All right, you'll see that columns are going across and they're incrementing zero through nine, but you'll see the first group of these is in row zero, all the way through 11, all right? And then the next row, row one, does the same thing again. So the next row down has 11 new columns. Then we go to row 2 and we create 11 more columns. So that's the basis of it. Now, every time I create a tile, I'm also inserting a tween into a Timeline Max instance called TL. And the way the animation works is that all the tweens on the tiles are exactly the same, just changing the scale and the alpha. But the big thing here is that we dictate what the delay is going to be based on what row and column this tile lives in. All right, so all these tweens are the same. If I comment out this one here, I can test to see, oh, what does column by column look like? And we'll just uncomment, and then when I test, there we go, that's in the way, thank you. There we go, column by column. Each tile in a column will animate in at the same time. So we have these columns building now left to right all at once. And so that delay there simply says, give me the current column that this tile is in, and uh, we're gonna multiply it by 0.1. Okay, so we're gonna get a short delay there. But every tile in that column will have the same delay. And as we go down down the list, they get a little bit more complicated doing the diagonal bottom right to top left tween was a little bit more difficult. But what you can do is set up your file like this and just pull out or cherry pick the tween that you want to use. You don't have to do all that complication. So really what I'm saving you from here is the trouble of figuring out how do I get this really super awesome you know, diagonal fade in of all these tiles here. All right, there's a zillion different tutorials on building grids. Um, I want to focus on showing you one way of creating these sequenced tweens in there. All right. So I think you guys are going to be pretty set once you get this file. I have some features built in where I can change the space between the tiles. I can make it zero pixels. So you'll see that those grid lines will now go away because every tile is right next to each other. All right. There's no space. And if you ever wanted to, you could actually go into your library and I, you'll see that I have the tile symbol here and you could change the size of that symbol. All right, and the grid code is really smart. And you know what? I could even make it, excuse me, wider than it is tall. 
and it's still going to build a perfect grid for me. Okay, so my little for loop here has all of that logic built in based on the size of the tile it knows where to put it inside of the container that they're all being added to. So I have this movie clip called container and when I'm running through this loop I create a new tile, I figure out what row and column it should be in, I then place it exactly where it should be based on its size, its current row or column, and also its width and whatever the H space and V space are. Um, I'm setting everything initially to have scale X and scale Y of zero and an alpha of zero. If I take these things out, you'll see that you just have a grid. And it's all black because all those symbols are all right next to each other. But I could say, you know what? Let's set that H space and V space back to one. And we're good to go. And now we have one line of space there. So you may want to build a grid someday and not animate it and this code will help you there too. Uh, but really the meat of this is that we have all these different tween styles that have the delay equations figured out for you. Um, I'll show you one more before we go that isn't in the uh, Grid Explorer and there is my circular tween where if you look, ah you dummy, and I want to make sure that I am not doing this. All right, so here you go. You see now that there's sort of an arc being formed here. So I call it my circular one. All right, and I just sort of stumbled across that messing around with some math. But it's very cool and uh, have fun with these guys. Um, I have the code here to reverse the tween, but we did this in the Peacock Challenge, so that's nothing new to you. So do your homework on how to build the grid and then just focus on how each tile has a tween that has a unique delay based on its row and column. All right, folks, I will catch you in the next one.